Hi, we're the Thompsons. So today we are going to attempt to replace the screen in Galaga. It's got an old CRT monitor that no longer works. Or a tube TV, which I have taken apart a couple. And what are we going to replace it with? We're going to replace it with an Acer LCD computer monitor that has a VGA input. Mm -hmm. So the Acer monitor is over there on the floor plugged in. But first we're going to do a low risk test and make sure that we bought a converter board on Amazon. After searching around, we found it's a lot like that uh, monitor I did a few years ago, the external laptop screen but monitor. She had to find the exact right converter to, uh, like this one, to get the exact signal from a HDMI or VGA to the computer screen. Right. And this controller we got will work for several different video formats. We're going to output VGA to the LCD screen. So let's, uh, let's see if we can do this. We're going to start by making a couple changes here on this controller we bought and then we're going to tap into where we because we can't make this thing any worse we get sound but we don't get video and so it's really not worth anything so let's get going with replacing a screen on a Galaga game okay so our, from our video card here we're going to take half these wires and we're going to solder them to the five pin connector Let's get them all the same length here, though. Okay, go. Count your finger. Yep, that's good. Boom, all right. Now these ends are already tinned, so let's go ahead and we will solder these ones on first. Why don't we take this connector out? So we yeah, that's, a, any of these that's a great idea. Let's take this connector out, because we don't need it. Pop it on the floor. And so, we are going to now solder these wires we just cut onto this connector here, which says RGB ground S. All right. All right, Alex, I'm going to have you hold the wires just right next to the pins, and I'll stick them on, okay? Okay. Okay? Yes. Well, let's so. get ground. All right, now we'll do ground. All done. Okay. So we've got our wires now moved over to this five pin connector. Now it's a we need to strip. We need to strip these ends and tin our leads on this end. So we're going to do that. So now we've got the Galaga game already kind of scooted out. We got to get you guys back there now, and we're going to show you what we're going to do inside the cabinet. Um, it's time to go. I guess go ahead and splice these wires. Huh? We've already checked the monitor. We plugged it in. We know that the monitor works because the Acer logo comes on. Yes. We're going to use this power cord uh, with the barrel connector first because the other little power cord here just has leads. Okay, yeah, let's get the multimeter in there and we'll go probe around and then we'll splice these wires into our video signal cable here on our CRT monitor. Oh, wow. Okay, what do we got in there? Okay, so it looks like we have the old tube. This is probably the flyback with this old potentiometer. So this is probably the gameplay board. There's some weird chip on there, a bunch of weird chips. And then there's the power supply down here. There's another little circuit board here, something. And this doesn't look original. That no, looks that looks new. new. What is that thing? Um, it looks like it's a power supply. So there's an input um, here. There's a output, which is 12 volts, two amps, a five volt, one amp. Ground another ground a five volt twelve amps. Oh, we can pay. Hey, we can pull power off that that one then. F G A C A C. F G must be ground. Yeah, it would have to be, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay, so we could probably pull some of the uh, twelve amps off yeah, of this I've... pin because there's no way this machine is using twelve amps five volts. No, I no, I think you're right. I think that's what we do. All right, so you can see here we've got our video wires. They've actually labeled them for us. Red, green, blue, black zinc, and white zinc. So what we're going to do is we're going to splice in, we're going to cut these, we're going to splice in those wires we just put on that controller, and hopefully we can send a signal from this board through these wires and out to our controller board. So all these wires here are direct matches except this old blue one here, which is basically a faded purple. But if you look up here, it's a actually blue. So these are all direct matches except the blue, so that should be pretty easy, easy for us to wire it up. So in here, we can see all the... Oh, hi, Ali. <laughs> you gonna help us? Are you gonna help us, Doodles? 
I what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you making noise? <laughs> You're silly. Okay. Anyway. I'm gonna look in here. Hey, Dad, this is just a plug. Oh, this. it is. You can just tap into here. Well, yeah. Let's just shove the yeah. Let's just shove the wires in here to test to test it. Okay. Let me go get the. Con and then Do those feel pretty solid? They feel pretty they solid. Loose? And then blue goes last, right there. And then the middle hole doesn't do anything. It's a six prong connector with only five prongs. All left. right. And then this, if this works, then we then can we can cut our wires and do the splicing. Yes. Okay. All right, that okay. looks pretty good. So let's go get the let's get the monitor and just set it back here and too. Get the adapter, the power cord. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Then we're gonna screw it in nice and snug, so it doesn't come loose. Cause we don't want this to come loose. Okay. Here's your. Okay. Five here's volt power connector. Five volt power for the control board. Boom. We got power. Control board power. All right, let's plug in the monitor, monitor and the game system. Okay, let me get the monitor plugged. We got monitor power. All right, let me turn it on and find out. Yep, logo's on. Okay, here's Galaga. All right, plug in Galaga. I bet you, I bet you it's because our con our connections aren't good. Could be. Okay, so I'm gonna jiggle this thing around here. Okay. <gasps> we got Galaga. Dude, move your hand. Okay. Yep. So there's loose connections there. <gasps> Couple Galaga. Holy dude. All right. Look at that. Dude. Oh no, I lost all my high scores. So I've got the game system rotated around here so you can see what's in the back side because there simply wasn't enough room back there to do anything. There's a couple bolts here. These look like quarter inch, so it'll be 7 sixteenths. On this side, there's nothing. Uh, and there are a couple bolts up front. Now this entire thing sits, you can see here, on this bracket. There's a one horizontal bracket here. There's a similar one up front. The glass that's up here does come out. So what I may do is drop the front out and do it that way. Um, because if I just unscrew these here, I'd really like to take out the entire, the entire thing and so it might actually be easier if I had access from the front. But let me, um, let me go see there. So here you can see it's just these little latches. You unclip them, they're over center latches on each side. And then I've just now got the, uh, I didn't want to unplug this. But I've just got it sitting here now in the uh, coin tray. So that now I should be able to remove the glass and everything to get access to this. And that lifts out very carefully, and I'll set it down over here. Okay, and now you can see here's our tube. We got a little bit of game over burn in. There's another, oh, this plastic screen is screwed down. You can see that right there, and another one over here. So we need, I want to get this out next. Let me get this screwdriver and take that out. So unscrew that. Yep. And we'll unscrew this one. The idea here, I want to remove as little mass as possible. Okay. And coming out. Okay, now that I've got the screen covers off, I've got a little bit of a decision to make. These two quarter inch bolts here bolt up into these horizontal rails. These horizontal rails, you can see here, are screwed down in, these nuts are actually sunk into this wood. But here's the question, is how do I remove this? The easiest thing to do would be to use a socket or something to undo the short, the, or the small bolts that hold these horizontal brackets into the wooden supports inside of the cabinet. Because if I do it that way, once I get all four loose, it's just going to still stay there, and then I can slide the entire unit out. Problem is, these nuts are embedded pretty deep in here, and I don't know if I can get a hold of them. And the screw heads on the other side don't have any way to grab, they're not Phillips, they're not flathead, they're just nothing. They're just smooth bolts. And so, actually they might be just rivet studs into these. So I'm thinking, 
I may have to leave these horizontal rails and undo these. In which case, what I'm going to need to do then is C-clamp this big triangular bracket to the horizontal bracket because as soon as you undo these, this whole thing's going to want to fall. Whereas if I'm able to undo these, nothing wants to fall down. And then I just slide the whole unit out. But since it doesn't look like I can get to these little screws here that hold the horizontal brackets in, I'm going to have to take out these quarter inch bolts. There's two here on this side, two on the front side, and I'll use a C-clamp uh, after I loosen some so that I can hold the opposite edge while I work on the other one. So I'm going to start, I'm going to remove the two up front first, then that way I remove these last, and then I can just slide it out uh, from underneath the C-clamp in front. I think that's going to be the easiest workflow for this. So I'm going to go around to the other side and do that. So it helps to have an extra set of hands for this portion. And you noticed, there's my extra set right there. You've seen those hands before when we replaced an iPad screen. All those years ago. Okay, uh, don't let it fall. I'm gonna run and grab the front end. All right, and out. Oh, God, that is heavy. <laughs> Alrighty. But there we go, the cabinet's been stripped of the old CRT. There's a ton of space in there. You could put a couple bodies in there now. But uh, it's ready to receive our new monitor. All right, so we're going to pry off this old monitor stand here. We need to test fit this monitor. This is our test monitor. We're going to test fit it to see if it really fits. I think we're going to actually have to go buy a cheaper, slightly larger monitor. Uh, well, not cheaper, but slightly larger monitor from somewhere because... I don't want, I mean, you don't want too small a screen, but you also don't want something too big. However, in a situation like this, where you have to fit within a certain envelope, you have to err on the side of small, uh, because there's, you simply can't go too big. Okay. All right, so, we've got about two, an inch on each diagonal, don't we? Yeah. Now that the monitor is out, we're going to use its old power wires here. These are 120 volt AC. And we're going to put the monitor power wire on the end. So we're going to cut this old monitor power cord. We're going to reroute the ground wire uh, down to the ground of the cabinet here, since this whole thing is grounded. So we're going to go ahead and cut this plug off. We don't need this plug anymore for anything. Okay, that's off. Now, just like before, I'm going to strip this cable back solder the connectors on, solder the ground to the case here, and uh, do that. I probably don't need to show you all that. Soldering wires is nothing tricky. Okay, might be too hot. All right, so there's black and green, and now we're gonna do the other three. Okay. So we'll tape those up. All right, Alex has pulled out the uh, little power supply converter here and we are going to hardwire in our 5 volt power lines since the test was successful. This is the wire clamped? Yeah. There. Okay. Yeah, I think you're good there. All right. Okay. Slide that back in. Tighten that sucker down. Got scraped on something. Hmm. Okay. All right. Let's plug this into the power on the board. Like that. All right. I uh, set the board in there, I guess, down in the base, and we can I'll put it uh, right here. Yeah, that's a good spot. It could just probably. I'm gonna sit get there. the VGA cable. It could sit there forever, probably. All right. Let's uh, let's run power to the um, plug in the system real quick. Make sure we get board power, and then we can yeah test the VGA cable to the monitor. The light should come on instantly. All right. We'll look for red light. Yep. We got board power. All right. Okay. Let's let's see if we can get the VGA hooked up. All right. Gala, get up. <laughs> See what you got, second. Then Alex had the brilliant idea of using this rubber made lid to support the monitor. 
and I was going to come up with a really complicated metal bracket. But what we're going to do now is simply replace this with a black painted piece of wood and set the monitor on it just like so. As you can see, it positions it really, really nicely here. And so this wooden piece will go in here just like so. Move this speaker cord out of the way. I cut it a little bit short because I want airflow to be able to come around the sides here. I didn't want to butt it right up against the cabinet. Okay, and now I'll put two down in front. Okay, now I've got a solid wood base with ventilation to hold the monitor. So actually the stop box is gonna go in here. Oh, that's convenient. And the monitor is simply just gonna rest on this. This lines up with this and everything's perfect. How about that? Okay, so I'm gonna just screw my stop block then right in here. Well, that's how you replace a CRT monitor with an LCD screen in a cabinet arcade machine. It really wasn't all that difficult, you can see. It's something you can definitely do yourself, just don't be afraid to try. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson. That's my helper, Alex. And thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. It's fun.